long as I can see it and we know what you want, my hands can do it for you. Nevada has always been a hat-oriented state before Nevada was even a state. Uh, its main money still, not gaming, is mining and agriculture. The miners, agriculture, the cattlemen, which this state was built on, have always worn hats. And with the hats come a lot of stories, a lot of lies, and a lot of sentimental value. We rebuild an awful lot of hats for people whose granddaddy had the hat, whose father had the hat. Um, we have had hats that people, their friend was killed in a wreck, and we put inside the sweatband, this hat belonged to so-and-so, killed such and such a date for so-and-so. They're never going to wear the hat again. It's going to hang on the wall, but it was their buddy's hat, and that's what they have to remember them by. It's a derby, a top hat, a fedora, and cowboy hat of all description. We're going to take you on a little journey and show you briefly why we make the best hats in Nevada. This is a pure beaver hat. Most of your hat bodies today you're going to find at the stores are rabbit fur, rabbit beaver blend, up to a pure beaver hat. This is the finest you're going to get. Rabbit is a good hat. When you get into your rabbit wool or wool blend hats, they're the poorest quality. This hat is no shape to it. We're going to set the size, we're going to set the height of the crown, we're going to make everything to the hat you want. Everybody's heard of hat blocking. Not everybody's seen a hat block. These are hat blocks. They're different heights, different sizes. They're all marked what size and style they are for doing different hats and different creases. We have fedora blocks, Roy Rogers blocks for doing the Roy Rogers hats, different kind of buckaroo blocks for doing all the old time cowboy hats. When the hat's in the steam pot, we turn a little steam on it, we start getting the crown hot. Fur, when it is hot, gets very elastic and stretchy. Uh, not super stretchy like super like silly putty, but it will stretch and it'll conform what I do. Um, this blocking machine was new and being used during the Civil War, so it's well over 100 years old. And currently, we're doing over 3,000 hats a year in it. So Civil War to now, still making hats. It's going to go from here into the blocking machine. The blocking machine, when we put it underneath here, we'll grab the brim, we'll steam it up, and pull it out. Blocks in. This is one of our crown irons, and it's doing what it looks like it's doing. It's ironing the crown of the hat. The wood block we put into the hat body, um, this block has become an ironing board. It's shrinking the fur down to the block. We're not shrinking it lengthwise up and down, we're shrinking density. We're making it denser, thinner, but there's more material in lesser space. We tie the hat off onto the block so it won't shrink up, it holds on the root count iron. And this goes on until it's nice and smooth and it's pretty much dried out. A lot of people who make hats today, they don't understand the material they're working with. When we use these old crown irons, they shrink the fur, they continue the fur felting process. It makes a denser, higher quality hat. It's going to last you longer, it's going to clean easier, it's going to wear much better, and they also look nicer. When we finish the crown to put the finish on it, um, we literally sand the hat. We use different um, sandpapers and other materials to get the finish we want. On a black hat, after you finish sanding and everything's done, you have a bit of fuzz, a little fur that needs to be singed off. We take a brush, we'll rough it up a little bit, so we make sure it absolutely stands up as much as possible. Take some 99% alcohol, we dampen the hat, we put the ring on just so we don't get any of this onto the brim, and we get rid of all the excess fur. And we kind of run around, let the flames singe it down. So it goes out, 
Now when you brush it off, you have a very nice slick finish. So you have the hottest cool hat in town. This little tool is our confirmator. What it does is it'll take the shape of a person's head so we can transfer this into the hat. Um, when we make a hat, we make it the correct size so it'll fit their head, but nobody's head is shaped to some, like somebody else's head. What this basically does is when you put it on someone's head, let go of it, it sets their head shape. I'm an egg oval. This particular tool was made between 1843 and 1865. Um, most of your hats back that period, there's a lot of top hats, hard hats. Um, when you made a hat for somebody, this is where you got your head shape. When you make a hat, this one isn't made, but when the sweat banner things together, it goes into the hat, and you'd steam and press the brim to your head shape, and that would make it fit your head absolutely perfect. The crease we're gonna put in this hat is called an arena crease, like a roping arena. Get it nice and hot so it's pliable. Put the crease in, when it cools, it'll stay. A lot of people don't know how to crease a hat anymore. And because we do hand crease, we can truthfully say, we can make you any crease you want. As long as I can see it and we know what you want, my hands can do it for you. That's basically the hat ready to be stuffed with the satin and ready to go wearing. With a hat, you can change hats and change your image, not your clothes, just change hats, you totally change your image.